the ziggurat, a place so full of secrets that someone had to dig deep below just to harvest and store more. While everyone experiences Tunic differently, I think we all had the same reaction when traversing the quarry's depths. What the f is going on here? There are two ways to get to the quarry, but heading there from beyond the dark grave gives you a more complete picture, in my opinion. As you head in that direction, you pray to obelisks that power the entrance to a great door. This door has a very similar architecture to the door in the mountain, but that's another topic entirely. Before heading further down, you come to a monastery in the side of a mountain, housing one of the monuments to the hero's grave. But not much else, so you continue down, eventually coming to the entrance of the rooted ziggurat, the door you opened earlier. The rooted ziggurat holds Tunic's darkest secret, the truth about the obelisks. If you traverse the Great Library first, then you may already know this from the clues on the chalkboards, but seeing it right in front of you is another experience entirely. This area is flooded with a harmful miasma and you have to fight for every step. This is some sort of factory, and as you approach the blue key, you see the bottom is full of these obelisks. The key is guarded by the boss of the scavengers, but it's clear that the scavengers did not build this place so who did? To understand more, we first have to translate the manual, starting with the quarry's map on page 38. The monastery's description reads, Once a place of worship for the gods, thought to live beneath the earth. It was abandoned when the cathedral's influence reached its peak. From this, we can learn a few things. The monastery came before the cathedral. I'll cover the cathedral more in another video, so make sure you're subscribed. But for now, all you need to know about the cathedral is that it was the first heir's seat of power. This means the monastery was not originally built for the heir, but instead for another god or gods. This could be one of the oldest buildings in this ruined empire. It was abandoned, though. Whether willingly or not is debatable. The cavity's description translates to exposed fossil that has dented a patch of local truth out of the canonical plane. Being near it does not hurt, but does instill a terrible feeling of hopelessness. These are the pockets we have to navigate around, because actually they are extremely harmful. But read that again closely. Being near it does not hurt, but does instill a terrible feeling of hopelessness. When you are too close to these pockets, it's true that they do not hurt, they do not drain your health, but instead the feeling of hopelessness saps away at your health bar's total. If you are at full health, you will always be at full health, but your bar shrinks down all the way until one single hit will kill you. You become more fragile. The Rooted Ziggurat, a house for strange gods, exposed by erosion and greed. The question we need to ask here is, are these strange gods the same gods the monastery was built for? In some religions, structures for worship, churches namely, are considered a house for God, but this was not built, it was exposed or discovered. The monastery's gods were thought to live beneath the earth, so could some from this religion have started digging beneath the earth, eager to encounter their gods? We will come back to the ziggurat, but let's continue translating the page. The gun. Powerful, but uses a lot of magic. Savvy explorers have been known to quest for this soon after their arrival. Lower Miasma. The bottom of the quarry will sap your will to go on, unless precautions are taken. Were the rumors that the air is poisoned misunderstood because of this miasma? Tunic is translated phonetically, so the air is poisoned could be read as in air with an H, or air with an A. Two scenarios can arise here, depending on how you translate it and what is being misunderstood. Either this area was abandoned due to the very air we breathe being poisoned, or the fox air was poisoned and the people worshipping the air's power abandoned their cause. Both scenarios are speculation, but both outcomes are still seen in the world we explore. The monastery is abandoned, save from the scavengers wearing gas masks, and the air is locked away, abandoned by their people. We've translated the story on pages 3 to 5 before on this channel, but let's quickly recap what we know from the story in the instruction manual. We know that there was a civilization of great power who had the ability to venture to the far shore and held sacred the secrets of the Holy Cross. 
presumably, this is the civilization that used the monastery. And an alluring old power was discovered, or perhaps exposed by erosion and greed. These tombs were not created by this civilization, they were discovered, and thought to be the power to defy death. The rooted ziggurat was older than the monastery's civilization. The discovering hero brought one of these tombs back to the monastery to open it, revealing its contents, a new origin of life, and the cathedral was built to worship it, with the first heir leading the charge. This new origin of life is the lever that overworked, and the fulcrum is the society built around the lever, which shattered. A hole in truth will thunder open and all manner of disquiet contradictions will gnaw apart the canonical plane. This is similar to our translation of the cavities in the quarry, exposed fossil that has dented a patch of local truth out of the canonical plane. In this context, I believe the truth that both are referring to are reality, thus the disquiet beings are able to gnaw apart reality. The absence of truth leaves behind these cavities, which are almost like little black holes, sucking away your essence, your will to go on. But one thing we still haven't looked at yet is the miasma. We see this miasma flooding the ziggurat and artfully incorporated into the cathedral's architecture. This is a byproduct of the obelisks, of pulling the lever. The instruction manual story depicts images of the faithful drinking the miasma from chalices, and we see remnants of this in the cathedral. The ruin seekers we see in the cathedral are hollow and zombie-like. Perhaps the miasma has sapped away their will to go on, or perhaps they know the instruction manual story and have drunk from the chalices, becoming infected. Either way, they are aggressive towards you and their hits deplete both your health and health bar, like other miasma beings. But there is one other place we see the effects of the miasma, the ruined atoll. Here we see the obelisks powering the ley lines, and since some of the ley lines are broken, we see that it is the same miasma running through the lines. The ruined atoll is full of flora and fauna, and the description on page 34 gives us another clue about the miasma. The description for the purple birds, known as hushers, is a friendly bird that loves to eat swarms. Playing Tunic, I have not encountered a friendly husher, but I have encountered tons of aggressive ones. Perhaps they were once friendly birds, but the pollution of the miasma corrupted the swarms, poisoning the food chain, and therefore the ecology. Hushers, on a diet of infected swarms, become infected themselves. But what about the spider-like things we see crawling out of the miasma? Were they infected as well? While we don't have an in-game description of the spider-like beings, I don't think this is the case. Their design is very similar to the creatures entombed in the obelisks. Infected creatures still retain their general form, instead their behavior is altered. The miasma creatures are not infected, rather they cause the infection. While we may not know where the miasma creatures came from, we do know that they predated the first heir. When the first heir discovered them, breaking open that obelisk in the monastery, we know that miasma creature was taken to the cathedral for worship. We encounter them still there, in much the same way the instruction manual story depicts. Passing through their room again later, they're gone. But we do encounter them again while looking for the hero's grave in the monastery, not very far from where the tomb originally encasing them lies broken. The monastery and Ziggurat hold some of the biggest clues to unraveling the mysteries of what happened before, but not all of it. Since the miasma has the ability to suck away bits of your essence, is this the same reason disquiet beings are able to gnaw away at reality? Is there a connection between the disquiet beings and the miasma beings? Is this what started the war often mentioned in the instruction manual? Unraveling the secrets of Tunic and speculating the legends have been some of the most fun I've had with any video game, and your support fuels me to keep digging. This video was in part inspired by a comment left by Inland Empire Outdoors, so thank you so much for your thoughts. Tunic really is about community, whether it's nudging someone who's stuck in the right direction, obviously tiptoeing around spoilers, or if it's theorizing and speculating the complete story. Thank you for all of your comments. Your support for my insane ramblings about this game means the world.